Good evening and welcome along to NUFC Matters. Uh, Post-match reaction to the Sheffield United game at St James's Park today. Malcolm, what a great performance. Great to have football back, but a great performance from Newcastle United today. Yes, it, it really was a fantastic performance, I thought, considering that they've had a layoff in excess of 90 days. That's longer than a closed season. And, and, I, and I was concerned that Sheffield United have already got a game under their belt. Newcastle hadn't. And yet Newcastle came out and they looked as if there had never been a break in the first place. I thought it was absolutely fabulous the way that they were organised um, and that they were prepared to really go and get stuck in. Um, and the whole thing was just so smooth running. And I have to say that my congratulations to Steve Bruce. I think he's done an absolutely brilliant job. Him and his staff cannot complain in the slightest. I think it's an absolute A1 job. Yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, first half, you know, it was, it was going very much the way of, of all the Premiership games we've seen over, over, the, over the start of Project Restart. Nil-nil, very cagey. Teams, you know, teams starting to get back into the, the flow of playing football, first and foremost, competitive football, but also adapting to the atmosphere. Or lack of it because or lack of because yeah there, because there was no crowds and you know from from their perspective it's finding that finding that level so yeah I, I don't think it was any surprise as well you know that you were playing Sheffield United who've got one of the best you know defensive records and, and Newcastle's defense yeah, it's the second best in the Premiership isn't it Newcastle's isn't too bad either so so yeah the first half I think the only talking point really and, and I think you probably groaned as much as I did when Joe Joe Linton went through. Um, you know, with only the yeah, in the first half. I mean, you know, what what was he thinking there? Did he change his mind, Malcolm? Well, this is what concerns me. That I don't think he's at times like that. I don't think he's got a mind to change because he doesn't really know what to do in the first place. So he he never makes a selection, and he gets to a situation and it's ah, what do I do now? Yeah. Um, you know. I, and, and he had to shoot, otherwise he was going to be running up the terraces. Um, and, but I have to say, I'm delighted for him that he did get a, a goal in the, uh, uh, in the second half. Um, and, and what I would say is that, because my, my, one of my major complaints about him is but outside of the area, he'll get it, he'll knock it off, and then he ambles. Today, for the second time this season, from, from my recall, the second time this season, he laid the ball off, turned, and sprinted. And he really went for it. And in the end, he left the Sheffield United defender for dead. And he was the first um, into the... Uh, um, in, into the penalty area um, and was still striding out as he got to the edge of the six-yard box and knocked it in um, and was well clear. And super ball in uh, from Matt Ritchie, and, uh, who I thought was absolutely terrific today. Absolutely terrific. And what a fabulous goal he scored. Um, but, yeah, that will have done Joe Linton's confidence, the, the world of good, of that I'm convinced. Um, but there is just one thing. I watched his reaction to having scored. And I don't believe what he said was the truth when he said, oh, goals don't bother me that much. You know, it was quite a shocking thing for a, for a, a, a centre forward and a Newcastle number nine to say. Um, but I think that his reaction to the ball going over the line into the into the goal um, net, uh, it, it it said everything about uh, how how his his desperation has probably got the better of him. His desperation to want to score goals. 
you think we had a bit of kidology uh, before the game, Mal? Because when we were talking midweek about the the team, uh, you know, the, the the noise coming out of SJP, even up until you know yesterday, was that Matt Ritchie was you know unlikely to play. He was injured. Gale was unlikely to play. He was carrying a knock. Um, do you think there was a bit of kidology, you know, on behalf of Steve Bruce? And do you think you know we're caught Wilder out with that? Quite possibly, yes. Um, Matt Ritchie looked perfectly uh, fit to me, and I, and I thought he was he was absolutely terrific today. Um, he really was. And uh, um, the, the people that were missing were, were both the Longstaff brothers. Didn't see them at all. Um, well, in the stand, the cameras did pan to the stand. At and one that's point. right. They set up in the stand. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, so. I, I just get a feeling that uh, that there's a message there, yeah, um, as to as to how the club are viewing the brothers at the moment, yeah, particularly well, hopefully, the younger lad. Hopefully that gets hopefully that gets resolved. We've got to talk about Sin Maximum. I mean, for me, he was man of the match. Richie, I mean, look, it was a good team performance, and Richie was outstanding as usual. But I think he always is. Hayden as well. You know, makes makes Shelby's job a lot easier. I, I I always say, but I thought some maximum today was was outstanding, and all of that training in his back garden with his dog has certainly paid off. <laughs> yes, hasn't it? Um, I, yes, he was absolutely terrific. Um, and Sheffield United defenders didn't know what to do with him. They didn't know whether to get tight um, and, and look to to nick the ball. Um, and I, I think they were scared that they would be giving away free kicks, penalties and get bookings and sendings off and all sorts. Um, as it so happens, there was a sending off, but it, it, it was on uh, Joe Linton. Um, uh, uh, but St Maximin, uh, from the very start to the finish, uh, when I saw him, um, when I first saw him just before the game started, I, I just got the feeling that that he was hungry, absolutely hungry and desperate to, to get on with it. And, uh, well, uh, his whole performance um, throughout, throughout the game, in, in every way, wherever it was on the field that he went playing, um, you could just see the panic in the Sheffield United defenders' eyes whenever he got the ball. And I think that just said everything. And... Uh, um, and, and Sheffield United, you know, when you think of the, the lofty position that they're in, and yet Newcastle United um, have um, got a double over them, the win double. They've scored six goals against them, haven't conceded. Um, you know, and, and what, what are they? Seventh, I think, sixth or seventh, yeah. Sheffield United. You know, so... Uh, that's some uh, that, that's some win double for Newcastle. That, that, um, they should be very proud of that. Don't get overconfident though. Um, I've I've watched Aston Villa um, this this afternoon and um, against Chelsea. Chelsea one two one, and Aston Villa are the, the opponents on on Wednesday at St James Park, and uh, they they. They didn't impress at all. Uh, the, the, the score line was only um, one goal to the favour of Chelsea. And in actual fact, Chelsea were leaps and bounds ahead of them. Yeah, and, I guess uh, we want to play their goal, Mal. I mean, I watched, I watched part of that game. Um, yeah. I have to agree, yeah, I, I would say that, you know, Aston Villa are there for the taking on Wednesday. Newcastle, of course, moved up to 12th tonight, 38 points, 11 points clear of the relegation zone. Um, a win on Wednesday, that's, I would say, we're mathematically more or less safe now, but I would say a win on Wednesday will cement it. I would think so, yes. Yes, and if, and if Newcastle go out um, in much the same frame of mind as they did today, with the same attitude, then they should be taking three points out of the game. And, uh, yeah, I think that uh, take three points out of this one and safety is pretty well assured. Uh, it would have to be an extraordinary run of victories by somebody down the bottom. And I can't think who that would be out of the bottom three. 
Yeah, I think pre-match today, somebody would have to win five games and we would have to lose all of our games. So yeah. I, you know, after winning today's game, especially against you know a team chasing European football, I, I, you know I think that you know Steve Bruce has more or less done it. And you know you've, you've got to give him a lot of praise, like you rightly said at the top of the, the, the top of the program. You know he's, he's, he came in unfancied. You know, neither of us really wanted him as, as manager, but um, up against it, he's uh, he's managed to get the results by hook or by crook. He's had a bit of luck, which of course mm-hmm. everybody needs in football. Um, but you know you can't take away the job that he has done. Um, as Newcastle United manager, and of course that you know whatever happens this season will be on his CV, and uh, you know if he stays, he stays, and if he goes, you know he, he'd probably walk into a, another good job. Absolutely, um, and 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 I, I would think he feels his position is somewhat a bit precarious for, the, for what's going on with regards to takeover and what have you. When takeovers happen, they normally want to bring their own manager in, um, and and I think that he's handling the whole situation very well, um, and particularly in a in a diplomatic um, fashion. Um, and he, he he seemingly isn't bothered about it. And yeah, his CV is going to look um, it's going to look very strong, very powerful by the time the end of the season comes. Uh, what did you make of the substitutions and that today, Mal? Obviously, we can have nine on the bench, five substitutions made. I mean, Steve Bruce, he, he did he did make his allocated substitutions today. Wise, really, I suppose, with all the games that we've got coming thick and fast. And, of course, our next game, Wednesday against Aston Villa. That's right. Yeah, get uh, key players off um, so that they don't do any damage in the last um, quarter of an hour or so. And also... Um, It allows others to get a run out, you know, to get a a feel and a touch of of, of the whole uh, um, ambiance and atmosphere of it all and the the very pace of of the game. You can never recreate the pace of a a premiership match um, in training or in practice matches. It's it's only the real thing um, that you can uh, pick up on. And uh, yeah, so I, I think that um, he, he was wise to, to play it exactly how he did. He, he, he left the subs sitting on their backsides until the game was won. And there was, there was no hope for Sheffield United to come back into it. And therefore, yeah, get the subs on and let them have a good old run. Malcolm, we'll be back together Thursday, so uh, I'm going to ask you for your prediction, your prediction for the Aston Villa game. Um, how do you see it going? Uh, I would dearly like to see Newcastle put out an identical performance to what we've seen today. And if they do, uh, they, they will beat Aston Villa. Uh, um, I know it's a funny old game, <laughs> but, um, you know, and strange things can happen. But Newcastle United, I, I really did l- see them as a, as a solid outfit. Um, they were getting forward ever so well. Um, and, and they were causing havoc down either flank, both, of, both flanks. And, uh, and Sheffield United, I, I, I watched them very carefully when they played the first game um, uh, 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 of recent times. And they looked very, very good. Today, Newcastle made them look very, very ordinary. Yeah, 100%. Well, I went for 2-1. You went for 2-2 with today's game. Um, Yeah, I thought Sheffield United would give more trouble than they did. So, Mm -hmm. well done, Newcastle, for that. My prediction for the Aston Villa game, I'm going to go for a Newcastle win again, Matt. I think Newcastle's tails will be up. I don't think Aston Villa will be capable of getting a result at St James's Park. I do fancy Newcastle to win that game. I'm going to go. I'm going to go two nil on on Wednesday night. What about you? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't blame you for your confidence in it. I too am confident. It. Newcastle have just got to put out the same kind of performance. And if they do, I I can see another 3-0 scoreline. And 
and what I what I saw in, in in the last hour of the game, I saw players in black and white shirts so thoroughly enjoying themselves. They were enjoying the game, and and the and the lack of crowd. It, it didn't matter, you know. Once once goals start to go in, it doesn't matter all that much because you you you're getting so much into the swing of things. And Newcastle United, absolutely terrific today. I would love to see that kind of performance against Aston Villa on Wednesday. Mal, as always, a pleasure. Uh, great to have you on, and I look forward to uh, chewing the fat about Newcastle United with you on Thursday night. I look forward to it, Steve. Take care, Mal. Good night. Bye-bye.